In this video, I'm going to talk about Osazone formation. Osazone is actually an intermediate that is formed whenever phenylhydrazine in acidic medium is boiled with reducing sugar. And as far as reducing sugar is concerned, that is reducing sugar. Reducing sugar are sugars with free anomeric carbon atom. With free anomeric carbon atom. Or is simply they are sugar that has free free aldehyde or keto ketone functional group. That's basically what reducing sugar is. Now reaction between reducing sugar and also phenyl hydrazine. Phenyl hydrazine. Phenyl hydrazine actually give rise to what to what is referred to as osazone right so that's actually what gives rise to uh osazone now i'm going to show the mechanism behind the formation of osazone using uh a reducing sugar like glucose i'm going to use glucose uh for the example then i'm going to show the step to steps reaction that occur in the formation of phenyl uh, in the formation of osazone using phenyl hydrazine and one thing i want you guys to understand is that this phenylhydrazine is actually present in an acidic medium. For example, it is present in acetic acid medium, right? So, and the reducing sugar and also the phenylhydrazine are boiled together. They are boiled together. So, whatever phenylhydrazine is boiled with reducing sugar is going to give rise to the formation of what? Of osazone. And osazone is actually uh, something that's actually formed. Whenever, uh, let me just say, if I'm talking about, if I'm using glucose as an example now, let's say I'm using glucose as an example. So what's happening is that the carbon number one and also carbon number two of this reducing sugar, they are actually the one that give rise to the formation of what? Of osazone. So if I have any osazone that is formed from glucose, for example, now I'm going to call it gluco, glucosazone. That's what is going to be the name, glucosazone. Glucosazone, that's going to be the name because it is actually formed from glucose. So I'm going to call it glucosazone or glucosazone. So that's actually what the name is going to be. Now let's show the step to step mechanism behind it. Now, the first thing I want you guys to understand is that since I said the carbon number one and the carbon number two of this glucose is the one that actually participated in the formation of osazone, that shows that I'm, I'm going to I'll divide this into what into two steps. Now let's say we have this first step, which is the step one. Right, so what happened in step one is that I'm going to have the structure of what of glucose. I'm going to have the structure of glucose, then this my glucose structure, right? Then here I'm going to have another one. Oh, it is here. I'm going to have it. Then let me simply represent everything here as out, right? Then plus phenylhydrazine. Phenylhydrazine is basically uh, you are having benzene ring, right? You're having benzene ring, right? So, and from here, you are having uh, this is connected to what to. The nitrogen here, you're going to have hydrogen here, right? And of course, nitrogen can form three bond at a time, right? Right, so you're going to have this connected to what? another nitrogen here. You're going to have hydrogen here, then you can put another hydrogen here. So this is actually phenyl hydrazine. Now, this is basically phenyl hydrazine. Then I can change this to, you no, know, this is carbon one, carbon two, three, four, five, and six. I can redraw the structure as well as uh, six, six, right? Then eight, five. Connected to what? Uh, we have a bond connected to what? NH, and this is also connected to what? To NH2. So this is basically the structure of phenyl hydrazine. It's not something that is actually difficult. And this is why it is, you are seeing this uh this INA is because of the amine group that are present here. And this is the structure of what? Of basically phenyl. Now, so the first steps I'm going to react to this glucose. This is basically glucose. Right, then I'm going to that's what with phenyl hydrazine. Then I'm going to form, uh, I'm going to form the first intermediate. The first intermediate is not, uh, is a derivative. Let me just say, is a the derivative of osazone actually. But one thing is that it is not actually the osazone that we want to talk about that we are actually forming because I've I mentioned it earlier that the carbon number one and carbon number two is one that are involved in the formation of what of osazone. Now in this, in this case, this is oxygen, right? Then this is hydrogen. Then I'm going to remove these two hydrogen. That's just that I can remove the molecules of water. 
if I'm removing a molecule of water here, I'm going to be establishing a bond between this carbon number one and also what this phenylhydrazine. Then this phenylhydrazine, I'm not going to rewrite it in this form. Then I'm going to have something like this. I'm going to have something like this here. I'm going to have the double bond is going to be connected to what to the nitrogen. Then I'm going to have another NH, which is this, right? This is the first one that I'm reacting with, what, with this oxygen. Then I'm going to remove what this two hydrogen and also what in molecules of water. So the double bond that is gotten from here is going to what is going to join with this double bond. Then I'm, that's why I'm having this carbon, which is this carbon number one, is connected to what is double bonded to what to this nitrogen. Then I'm going to have connected to what NH. Then I'm going to have connected to what six is. Then I'm going to have H five in this case. Now from there I'm going to have every other I'm going to repeat it. Then I'm going to have carbon here. I'm going to have OH here, right? Then here I'm going to have hydrogen. Then everything here I'm going to replace as what as R. Now that's the first structure I'm going to have. Then and don't forget this. There must be hydrogen here so that the bond can be, can be complete. Now that's the first intermediate that is formed, which is the first stage, right? And in this case, the medium is actually acetic acid medium. That is, uh, this uh, phenylhydrazine is friends with an acetic medium. Then I'm boiling it. Don't forget that you are boiling it. This is boil. You are boiling it. You are boiling both of them together. That's actually the first thing that is going to happen. Now this is the first step. And in this case, this is phenylhydrazine, right? And whenever you boil glucose with phenylhydrazine, you boil it with phenylhydrazine, what are you going to form? You are going to form a derivative which is called, which is known as glucohydrazone. That is the first thing you are going to form. It is glucohydrazone. And this is the first step. You are reacting glucose with phenylhydrazine, you boil them together, then this, you are, going, you are basically adding this phenylhydrazine to what? To carbon number one of this glucose molecule. They are going to form glucohydrazone. That's the first thing that you are forming. Then in the step two, which is basically you are bringing this uh, intermediate that is formed. That's what you have. You are going to bring the intermediate. You are going to have uh, something here. You are going to have N, NH here. You are going to have C6H5 in this case. Then here you are going to have hydrogen connected to this side. You are going to have this OH, right? They are going to have hydrogen here. They are going to have what? The R group here. So in that case, you are basically going to what, to add another molecule of what of any addressing. Don't forget that I said the carbon number one and carbon number two is one that passes in what in the formation of osazone. So in that case, I'm going to add another molecule of what of any addressing. So in that case, I'm going to be adding uh, H2N, right? Then I'm going to have uh, NH is here, then C6, then H5. This is phenyl addressing that I'm going to act at the same time. So once I add it, then it's going to come to this carbon number two. And in that scenario, I'll be removing what? Removing, basically be removing what? Removing this H2. Then I'm going to remove what? The oxygen here. Right? I'll be removing what? The oxygen here. So once I remove the oxygen here on this carbon number two, then I'm going to form another one, which is uh this, which is which is the second one, which is the main osazon that I'm talking about. That is the main osazon that is formed. Right? Which is the main osazon that is formed. Because I said carbon 1 and carbon 2 is one that passes in the formation of, of Osazan actually. So here I'm going to have this uh, as the product. So here I'm going to have carbon here. Then double bonded to nitrogen. I'm going to have NH, right? Then C6, then H5. That's what we have. So here I'm going to have hydrogen here. Then the second aspect, I'm going to have C double bonded with what? With. I'm going to have N again. Then I'm going to have NH, right? Then connected to C6. This is H5. Then here I'm going to have what our group. So in this case, this is actually osazone, right? And in this case, since this osazone is derived from what from glucose, I'm going to call it glucosazone. This is glucosazone, and this don't forget this is the intermediate, the first intermediate that is produced, which is called glucohydrazone, right? Glucohydrazone. So that's just it. And one important fact that I want you guys to understand is that the first two carbon this carbon number one and carbon number two is the one listen is the one that is involved in the formation of, of osazone and mind you anything that we call reducing sugar reducing sugar you no know, they will always have free and numeric end right so they are the one that undergo the formation of, of osazone they are don't have formed osazone reducing sugar don't have formed osazone uh anything like uh no reducing sugar they do not form osazone for example in the case of, of sucrose Sucrose do not form osazone. Very, very important. Right? And one thing I want you guys to understand is that we have disaccharide, they also form uh, osazone. And there is always a shape. There is always a shape of, of osazone. That's actually what you have to understand. But for example, in the case of disaccharide, 
let's say that's a kind of like uh let's say that's a kind of like uh fructose uh sorry like sucrose right so let me just give you something here let's say uh sucrose right sucrose no undergo the formation of osazone actually right because it does because it is not a reducing sugar but there's a kind of like the case of uh let's say we have the case of uh matos there's a kind of like matos they under they form reducing sugar they form osazone lactose also form uh, osazone but one thing about lactose is that it has pour, powder puff shape that is it's osazone formation as powder puff shape right it's as powder powder puff shape but in the case of lactose which is also referred to as milk sugar uh, it has a uh, Sorry, in case of maltose, lactose is referred to as milk sugar. In case of maltose, it has sunflower shape. That is sunflower shape. So they form osazone actually because they are reducing sugar. That's not they form the osazone. But in case of sucrose, sucrose does not form osazone. And another fact that I want you guys to understand is here is that you see monosaccharide like fructose, fructose like uh manus, they give the same type of Osazone that is formed from us from glucose. That is, you no, know, over that fructose, manose, and also and also glucose. Actually, they form a common intermediate known as what known as endihol. Actually, but one thing I want you guys to understand is that the same they still form the same similar thing, uh, the same shape of what of osazone. That is, whenever you subject fructose water to formation of osazone, it's going to form the same shape as that of what of glucose. And as that of what of manos, right? And the shape is always commonly is commonly is commonly referred to as us as needle shape. That's the shape that is formed, right? They form the same type of what of shape, which is referred to as us as needle shape. So that's just that I want you guys to understand. And the point that I want you guys to get from here is that reducing sugar are the one that under that form what osazone. And like non reducing, they do not form what osazone. They do not form osazone. So that's just it. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share. And at the same time, make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching.